right, Sarah, this 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 section is for for you or for anyone who feels. All right, let's let's look what happened with um, Bishop Snyder. He's an auxiliary bishop. I think at one point I called him Archbishop, and that's not quite right. right. So he has a book um, over here, uh, uh, Christus. Um, what is it? Yes, Christus Vincit Christ Triumph over the Darkness of the Age. And so there's a he's having an interview with uh, Diane Montagna. And so mm -hmm. she asks Bishop Snyder, um, <laughs> who baptized you? And so the good bishop says, now this is a very nice story. I was already baptized and was one year old when Blessed Father o Alexi, <laughs> o Alexi came to celebrate in Mass at our home. He celebrated the Mass secretly, and my mother put me in a cradle to the side of where Father was celebrating. I became an altar boy at one year old. <laughs> very cute, very cute. Yep. There were no priests in Kyrgyzstan, and only very rarely would a priest come secretly. My mother could not leave me without baptism. There's part of that household business. It right. was impossible for her. So one week after my birth, she baptized me herself because she knew her catechism well, and she knew it was possible. Your, your family was very well formed in the faith, and, and this is our goal here with Sarah and I in general and the Garden of Graces in particular, that formation of faith. Bishop Schneider will continue. As I said earlier, they read the catechism and even during forced labor, they were always repeating basic contents of their good German catechism. It's interesting to note that adjective of good. Mm -hmm. yep. I yes. haven't emphasized he does not. And they had written down the most important Catholic truths. To baptize me, my mother took a prayer book in which the baptismal formula was present. She spoke the words as she poured the water over me. And when she finished, she looked up at my father and asked, did I do this correctly? And my father said, I don't know. And then she said, well, I have to repeat it. And she repeated <laughs> the entire ceremony. <laughs> and she poured the water over me, pronouncing the words, and then she felt reassured that I had been properly baptized. And she chose the name Antonius after St. Anthony of Padua, um, and that's the patron of our marriage. I took that as a particular mm -hmm. sign. Then six months later, a Jesuit priest, Father Antonius, and another Anthony Saskavicius, mm -hmm. Who's from Lithuania, and he told all those German mothers to bring their babies who had not been baptized by a priest. So here's back to Sarah's right. point, because right. he wanted to make sure we were baptized. So my right. brother, so my mother brought me to him, and I was baptized for the third time. <laughs> so I have no doubt about the validity of my baptism. Right. I just. Yes. There's just so much. There's just so much with the uh, the dis, the form the importance of the formation of the her, right. his parents. Right. Um, good formation because when they go to Germany, uh, he's going to encounter other types of German catechesis. Right. So he puts that word "good" in there for right. a purpose. Then right. the mother baptizes. She doesn't want to wait. And then she's not sure. She does it a second time. Is that sense of her, the whole household to be included was such a great grace. I don't want my kids to be missing out. Right. And then the Jesuit priest who could, so, so right, they're in hiding. It's under persecution. He right. could have, with good conscience, uh, do a triage, right? right? He has only a little time, only the most pressing of matters. He doesn't do that. He tells the mothers to round those babies up and bring them here, and he's going to make sure he's going to yeah. get that straight. Yeah. And I go, oh, my yeah. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It, it's so, yeah, it's it's very, 
sad now uh, how many friends I have uh, who are now, their children are having, having grandbabies who see no, no value and have no intention of, of baptizing their grandchildren. And um, even though they were, and, and some of these children are people who are raised, you know, in a, in a very sound environment. Um, but it, it doesn't take very long for sin to make you stupid. It's true. And really, you know, I, I, and I think I've said this before on the show, um, or, you know, quoting this, I need to find the quote because I, I find it very worth meditating on. Um, and that is, it's not, it's not that people have a love of doing evil. It's rather that they become bored with goodness. Right. I mean, so it, it's so true that, you know, we have an overwhelming amount of, you know, I, I hesitate to use the word good, right? Because you you were using it so clearly to to describe the catechism, but an overwhelming amount of pleasure that's available to us. And you know, so consequently, and 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 when the church asks nothing of us, like like with a like a, like what we were saying before, if you fast, you will remember the feast. But when the church removes the fast, the feast becomes meh. If I'm not hungry, why do I want to eat? That's right. And we have we have really almost made our children like we've stuffed them to the point of gluttony with stuff. Yes. And then we weep when they're not hungry for 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 good things. And it's it is something to it's something to weep for, and it's a presumption. It's a horrible presumption on uh, what we think the Lord wants us to do. I know. Yes. Yeah, I know. Because the early church. And we ended here with um, what Carthage, what two, who was our last? No, Felicity was 202. Yeah, I think you went to, to Origin. Yes, origin we had and, Origin yeah. of 200 and 250 with Carthage. That was not their, that was not their idea. No, not at all. And it would very... have been more in line with what was going on in society at that time to have had right. that idea. And it wasn't the idea with Bishop Snyder in, uh, you know, under the Soviet Union right. when he was a boy. That wasn't, well, and that the wasn't the idea of the Jesuit priest here. Right. Want, right? Want creates demand. And may it not be so for us, right? I mean, let us be, let us. Uh, God is not an either or proposition, right? He's always both and he will give you he will give you joy and he will give you the sacraments, right? Mm -hmm. He he does not necessarily mean that you have to suffer a lack to obtain the sacraments. I mean, rich people can be blessed, people who have enough food for their for their needs, right? I mean, but if you if you begin in your wealth to reject his goodness, mm -hmm. then out of love and compassion for you, he will take away the things that are standing in the way of you receiving his grace. Yes. yes, that is right. Well, my friends, perhaps for I, I have um, reprinted here as an addendum uh, those excerpts that I ta talked about with St. Cyprian from his own how things that were impossible to him he was able to do. Oh, it's, it's from a letter he wrote to a new convert in 246. And I have it reprinted here. It's oh, a little over a page. And um, perhaps as Lent comes, you know, it's close, close up here. Um, right. Or if you have loved ones being baptized, it's, or your own self to, re to reflect on that great grace, those who came before you mm -hmm. in terms of giving us the faith, bringing you to the faith, raising you up in the faith. Um, it's not, you know, an individual process. It's, right. it's not. You know, and another thing, um, just by way of practical um, ideas, is to, you know, everybody knows the date of their children's birth. But there's no reason why you cannot have the date of their baptism, you know, equally marked on the calendar as a special day for them. I mean, if the child, 
the, the child can make no mental connection to his baptism unless that connection is created by loving parents. Right. And so, you know, families in fam couples who are who are blessed to have a big family, it's very true that the older children will always have very concrete memories of the baptisms of their younger siblings and thereby create a memory for themselves, right? Of their of what their own baptism must have been like. But there's there's no good reason not to celebrate that day. And I would even add, based upon what we know now, to prepare for the day of your baptism yearly, it might be prudent to do a day or two of fasting beforehand. I mean, certainly nothing that I've ever done, but what what a great way to approach that day that changes everything. It literally changes everything. I mean, your birth, your birth, obviously your birthday is important because that's the day that, you know, when you, <laughs> when you enter into the management. I mean, don't don't they good conscientious mothers fast? Um, you know, alcohol or smoking I, or sure I know for, for for health reasons, right? For health reasons we do that. So that their baby will be born healthy, right? I know we all of these things that have been given to us lovingly and 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 carefully from the mouth of our mother the church, right? have been somehow, like I said, we, we've received so little of our patrimony. But one, one good exercise would be, you know, go look at those baptismal records. Get the dates that your children were baptized. Get your own date that you were baptized and put it on the calendar and set a reminder. I mean, you know, we, we, when you had a paper calendar, you could, you know, pretend to forget. But I mean, for heaven's sake, you could have a, a, a notification sent to you a month in advance, a week in advance. 15 minutes like everything like yeah there's no way that you could possibly forget in the, with these modern calendars that are constantly blinging buttons at you right but i mean what a what a great way to really enter into you know the 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 reality of what that baptism gave you and how how beautiful to to pass that on to your children that you know your baptism is so important that two days before we're going to offer up our sacrifice of fasting how beautiful that would be that to would really be know. I don't even, I mean, I know roughly when I was baptized. I mean, I was baptized probably at the very beginning of November. I mean, I, I know that because I was born, you know, October 19th and, you know, two weeks is probably ballpark average, right? I mean, so I can be, I can know a rough date, but I don't even, I don't even know the real date of my baptism. And why don't we know? That's right. That's right. I, I was, but the Lord put that on my heart. So I called the church. I found mm -hmm. out my exact date. I do have it in my, <laughs> I do get notified. Um, I have visited that church. Uh, yes. Tragically, the church that I was baptized in is no more. So. Oh, well, I'm a, the church I was baptized in was torn down and the ugliest monstrosity of architecture <laughs> is in its place. Yeah. But the people's faith is incredibly yeah. strong. It's down in Louisiana. Well, who and knows? Maybe now they've built houses where my church was, and who knows? Maybe our Lord will will bless that little tiny neighborhood with vocation after vocation after vocation. Oh yes, we they can pray for your that. church down. Yeah, oh, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, they did not rebuild it. <laughs> it's just houses. They didn't put up with ugly. No, no, no. But like I said, I mean, maybe it's kind of like, you know, Scott Hahn Seminary, right? You know, I mean, all of the converts who came out of that seminary, maybe this will be the same type of thing, right? I mean, we can pray that that, that neighborhood suddenly will become known in the, the history of the church as being the most prolific neighborhood for vocations. That would be delightful. That would right. be delightful. So, so when right. is your baptism date, by the way? Um, November, I want to I'd have I'd have to look it up. It's November, and I'm gonna put it out because maybe we're baptismal sisters. <laughs> we just might hold on, hold on, November, and it's Our Lady Queen of Heaven, which turned out to be the parish we renewed our November 10th. I wanted to say the 11th, but I knew it wasn't the it wasn't uh, the day before Veterans Day. Very easy. Yes, yes, the day before <laughs> Veterans Day is correct. Yep. That is correct. Which is All also right. the feast of, uh, is that St. Sebastian? No, not St. Sebastian. Um, it's it's some, who tore his cloak and gave half of it away? 
the soldier. Oh, oh, oh with the song. Is it the? Yes. Well, he, he, it's the it's the Roman soldier who cuts his cloak in half and gives it to. Um, that was actually the traditional day that they would that they would do peace treaties because he was the soldier who gave up the life of so many peace treaties in the history of the Catholic in the history of like Catholic wars, quote unquote, are signed on his feast day, which of course now I can't remember. Martin of Tours. Martin, Martin of Tours. Of Tours. Right. Martin of Tours. Very good. All right, my friends. Some thoughts on baptism. Until the next time. Fides, Erratio.